YouTube family. Look at this. This is my 1996 two-door Toyota Land Cruiser, straight from Japan. Now we'll get back to this later, but if you've never been here before, I promise you this is a fashion channel for the most part. But this series is where we really get to know each other. I show you all my pickups from the previous month. But as a lot of y'all know, your boy just got surgery. So I was down for a whole extra month. So now you get two months of stuff in one video, but this is where we get to chill, kick back and just connect. So I'm gonna show you all my pickups, my clothing, my accessories, my fragrances, maybe a few little grooming things. Then at the very end of the video, of course, we're gonna get into all the real life stuff. So. We talking therapy and of course this beautiful vehicle right here okay so the first thing i want to show y'all are these grills that we got from japan it took like four months for these to come in the mail but worth the wait first i'll show you shanae's she designed these herself as you can see they are gold not a lot of tooth coverage just like very elegant and cute you got some diamonds in there some hearts on the fangs now me however i got two sets my first one is a 10 top 10 bottom fully silver naturally and if you look closely at the bottoms they spell on deck in the exact same font as my creative studio and the second set is also silver but as you can see it is fully vv as a diamond out and the first time we pulled these out together was at our baby shower it was super fun if you didn't see the video it's on my instagram right now and then we have my casio watches i don't have the exact like numbers and the models and all that for you but i will put the links in the description as usual i got them from walmart they're like 20 25 bucks but just really easy to wear especially since i kind of been in my dad era just like barbecuing in the backyard all the time working on my car and I just don't want to worry about banging up my watch up against something you know if I ruin it or if I break the glass it'll be very easy to fix or just replace so it's a much more practical choice but these also just look fantastic in my opinion I'm not gonna lie being on crutches was really hard for me not being able to help out my pregnant wife around the house and basically just kind of having to sit and wait for my ankle to heal so naturally I just obsessed over shoes the whole time so these would be the first ones that I hike in when and I'm like fully restored after I finish my PT. So looking forward to that. Then we have these mules by Siyaj. It's a collab with Tomo and Co. And they're both Japanese companies. You got the faux snakeskin upper and that foam sole that makes the shoe super lightweight and way, way comfortable. Oh, and these Horatio loafers. They are the perfect affordable alternative to the Gucci's that have been around for a long time. Now this is how they originally looked on the website. But as y'all know, I'm not a gold guy. So I got my own pair of horse bits from Etsy and have my cobbler swap them out. And these last two shoes I want to show y'all are the New Balance Warped Runner and the Fear of God California 2.0. Now, both of these are going to get their own individual comparison videos since they're basically newer versions of shoes that you guys know I've been rocking with for years, which is the New Balance 327 and the Fear of God California 1.0. And I have my feedback. They have pros and cons for both, but I just want to give y'all like an unbiased review and full on comparison in case some of y'all are thinking about getting either of these. Now, for those of y'all who know me, you guys know I wear these two scents a lot another 13 is like clean laundry it's fresh it's light but will still last you all day and mojave ghost has those exact same qualities but it's still a bit more warm a little bit more musky without being too overpowering. But one thing that I wish I learned sooner is how to combine them with the right deodorant and body wash. I would have a strong deodorant on that smelled like sport, a really musky body wash, and then I would wonder why the scent that I'm wearing isn't really coming through. My wife would smell me and be like, I smell your body wash, I don't really smell your cologne. And the body wash and deodorant that I've been on lately is by our video sponsor, Geology. Now, if you've been around long enough, you know I've been rocking with them since 2018 for my skincare regimen, way before they ever sponsored this channel, but across the board, they just don't miss. So if you like more of a clean, refreshing scent, like another 13, I strongly recommend Big Sur. If you like more of a musky, warm, strong scent, Hana keeps the same exact energy. And if you like more of a citrus or floral outdoorsy scent, then Moab is the move. All these are made with natural ingredients. They're vegan, cruelty-free, and on top of that, they're not gonna overpower your cologne. Just hit the Geology website, fill out the quick two-minute questionnaire, and when you check out, use my code DEVIN100 and you get 100% off a 30-day supply of skincare that is tailored specifically to whatever your issues are. That's why you fill out the questionnaire, right? And on top of that, you get a discount on the body wash or deodorant or whatever else you want to add to your cart. And Geology, I appreciate y'all for sponsoring this part of the video. Now, as far as clothing goes, I've really been on this sweater kick lately. Even though it's still definitely hot in LA right now, this V Willow hoodie I found on TikTok a couple months ago and did a pre-order instantly 
recently. It just looked great to me. That star on the back just feels very nostalgic for some reason. And I just didn't fight the feeling. I just got it. And turns out the quality is really, really good. And the kid who made this is like 20, 21 years old. So it feels really good to support an up and coming brand, especially when a maker product is dope. And then we have my slowly growing collection of sweater vests. As you can see, I'm wearing one right now. This is from Beams Japan. And I forget the exact brands of these other ones, but I will put them on screen for you and put the links down in the description per usual in case you want to find them for yourself. All right, so what you're looking at right now is exactly how I received the car when I bought it. So aftermarket wheels, this is a new paint color than the original. I think the original color was white. But other than that, everything is basically stock. And the plan with this was this to be like just a low maintenance dad car. Like, you know, I got a kid in the way, so I didn't want to care about like, you know, the kid messing the car up. I wanted to have something that we can just kind of roll around in, do fun dad stuff. Take a look, you see it's a little bit lifted. You know what I'm saying? We got maybe like a six inch lift on that bad boy you know just a lot of patina a lot of love that needs to be given and the goal with this car is to eventually just fully restore it to its former glory you got a little boo boo stain on the seat very dusty i'm not sure if you can see that dust coming up see the 90s interior i definitely want to keep this and just kind of you know condition it get it detailed and whatever can't be fully cleaned then we'll just swap it out you know what i mean like this grip is really brittle and old and the steering wheel i'm gonna show you actually a, a closer look at that now people when i get in the car right kind of crammed for you boy you know i have super long legs short torso so that means my knees are always up on the steering wheel so what i need to do is maybe get the seat modified but first step is to get the steering wheel smaller so it's about a 15 inch i'm gonna do a 13 and then also make it a quick release just so it's a little more secure as like a theft deterrent you feel me but besides that i'm keeping everything else stock well no i'm gonna put a better sound system in here for sure like some type of slap and probably some apple car play but other than that i'm gonna leave it i definitely want to keep it as is just want to clean it up, man but yeah really excited about this man and as you can see also it's a right hand drive i know i didn't really mention that but it should be obvious to y'all right now that the passenger is here on the left so yeah super exciting okay so here's the question as i upgrade this vehicle do mods etc y'all want updates in this series or do i do a whole separate thing just for the car Y'all let me know. I'm not sure how many car guys I got that subscribe to me, but if you want updates on the truck separately, I'm more than happy to do it. I'm going to share it either way. I just want to know how y'all want it. Let me know any questions you have, anything you guys suggest, any content ideas around vehicles. Please let me know because I haven't done any of this ever yet. So it's a new adventure on a lot of levels. You feel me? Okay, let's get into this life update. Remember last pickup video when I told y'all I got that steroid shot in my ankle so I can walk again? If you need the whole story, please go back so you can see it. But I just got worse, man. Way worse to the point where a week later, I'm just limping around my house. Even on days I didn't even work out. I'm just limping. It needed to change. It needed to be dealt with immediately because as y'all know, I have a baby on the way. So I got to contribute to my house in a very active way. My, my wife can't really move around like she used to. You know, I do everything she used to do and everything that I do as well. So. You know, we, we would split chores, we would split responsibilities, we would split, you know, work, all that type of stuff. Nah, it's all me now. You know, I don't let her lift a finger because she's doing so much work right now. Like, I didn't realize pregnancy was so hard on a woman's body. I don't know, like, it didn't hit me the same. Obviously, I have a lot of siblings. I'm the firstborn of, like, eight. So, on both sides, my dad and my mom, they both have, you know, gotten married numerous times. Like, I've seen women be pregnant, my mom be pregnant numerous times, but it didn't really hit me the same as my wife. You know what I'm saying? Seeing it day in, day out. Bro, so much respect. Anyway, I say all that to say, I knew I needed to get that surgery to fix it sooner than later. I was trying to avoid it. Obviously, no one feels good about going under the knife, right? It's never, not a fun thing to do, but it was necessary. So basically it was a laparoscopic surgery. So say this is my ankle. She went in from one side to the other. The bone spurs here. She put a little hole here, right? And then fucking, you know, you know what I'm saying? Like, like a Dremel, right? And just shaved it down from that side, same thing. So instead of like having to cut layers of like skin and tendon and muscle or whatever. It was just two holes, woo -woo, and I was literally back on my feet, I kid you not, in three weeks. I was back in shoes in three weeks, okay? So it was two weeks on crutches, one week in a walking boot, and then I'm back in shoes by the third week, and I'm still doing PT right now, and I should be done with PT in probably, I wanna say, about a month. But I am this 
close to hiking. I should be hiking probably by the time this video dropped, I would have hiked, okay? So very excited about that. And so grateful to my doctor and grateful to have insurance and be able to, you know, even do this. But it was just super necessary, right? I gotta be around here doing my daddy duties. You feel me? So yeah, there goes that. And speaking of daddy duties, I'm about to admit something to y'all. I've just never admitted ever publicly on social media. So here we go. In therapy, obviously fatherhood's been on my mind a lot. And with that, I've been kind of on a mission to just unpack my stuff. And I really want to just see myself and ask myself hard questions. One thing I have to stop doing now and what I've committed to stop doing is reading comments. I'm done with that. Now, the first 15 minutes to an hour, maybe like a long form YouTube video like this one, the first hour, I'll go back and forth from the comments, right? Because the first ones are all from the people who support me, my subscribers, you know, all that. I'm cool with that because y'all show love. You give valid, constructive criticism, like the kind that has like a solution. Oh, that's cool, but maybe you want to wear it like this or, ah, uh, you know, you know what I'm saying? Constructive criticism. But what I found myself doing is when I drop a video, like say I drop a YouTube short, depending on how viral it goes, I might have 100 comments to 500 comments. I will go past all of y'all showing me love, okay? And I will go down to the 10 people that are trolling or just talking shit. And then I would not only answer all of them or delete and block, but I will hold on to those and internalize them and still be thinking about them a week, two weeks later. And I was like, why do I do that? And I talked to my therapist about it and through various questions, you know how therapists will ask you questions just to like help you get to the place? Cause they don't know why either, right? I mean, you just talking about it for the first time. So they're trying to help you discover why. And my therapist is just so good. He's like a Jedi mind tricker, but like on my side, you know what I mean? So we're going through it. And what it came down to bro, is that there's still a part of me that's still very much that kid that wants to be accepted and liked by everybody, right? Which I know is impossible, but it's a kid inside me. Emotionally, I still want to be accepted. So because of that, I'm afraid to be myself 100%, right? There's a reason why that the life update is at the very end of a video that probably gets the least amount of views of all my videos, right? If you look at my YouTube channel right now, all my long form videos get way, way less views than my shorts, way less views than my Instagram videos, my TikTok video. So it feels like a safer place where I can just kind of be myself for a little bit and get up out of there, right? Because the more myself I am being, then the more vulnerable I'm being. And if people don't accept that, don't like that, it's all over for me. Right, that's like that's like my biggest fear. And I didn't realize that, I didn't see that, you know? So because of that, if you notice, on certain videos, you, you watch me make certain videos, look at my older videos, not my super old ones, but look at my videos, they're very structured, right? I'm very like big on education, inspiration, giving you access, right? Like here's a price point that's better. Here's a affordable alternative. I'm all about information, information, information. But the connection part, it ain't really been there. And I know it, I know it, but that's purposely done. So I never had to be myself. Cause if I never show you myself, you can never not really like me. And it took me so much to see that. So what I'm gonna promise to do going forward, and I've already promised that to myself, is that I need to do what's best for my mental health. And that is to be myself 100% of the time. So if I piss somebody off or I'm not somebody's flavor, that's none of my business, right? I know this is my calling. I know I need to be doing more of this. You know, I've been slowing down on content lately because I've been doing a lot of soul searching. I've been needing to find the reasons why I was losing my passion for it. It started feeling like work, too much like work because that flame I had in the very beginning, if you watch my super, super, super old videos, I started this when I was in my twenties, bro. But even then I had this idea of like not really being myself, right? I was speaking like my my retail voice, like my really high resonance. I would I would speak like Kevin Hart, right? It was more of like a performance, and like I'm not interested in being approachable anymore or trying to impress anybody. Like I just gotta be 100% me. And I'm not saying that you guys have never gotten me, but it's always been me filtered. Not like a face filter, but you know, I've been just kind of communicating through structure and value proposition. Like I know what works from a content perspective. Cause you guys know, like before I was full-time creator, I was a marketer. Like I literally worked at agencies and helped companies like Wells Fargo, Acura, Honda, Spotify, taught them how to do social media better. You know, they got these big old campaigns and I'd be the guy to teach them. Okay. Here's how you connect with people online, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But I wouldn't always practice what I preach. You know what I mean? I was always just afraid to, to connect with people and really be vulnerable. So here I am, okay? Doing the thing that I was so scared to do, but I'm not tripping, I'm not sweating, my heart's not beating, I'm just, I'm here. And I owe it to myself, I owe it to y'all, and I owe it to my future child. Not future child, my child, who here? You know, who will be here soon. So yeah, I just, I just can't go forward not, not being me no more. So you're gonna see a new level. 
That's all I gotta say. And I almost forgot, how are your morning affirmations going? I know that last time we talked about therapy and kind of setting your day up and what's been helping me. I told you I say those four things in the beginning of the day. Let me know how it's been going for y'all. You say, what are you grateful for? What are your intentions for the day? You know, your list of things, but also like what type of attitude do you wanna have going forward in the day? How do you intend to go about your day? What do you deserve, which is really hard, right? And then what are you excited about? Those things have helped me like really frame my day. It helped me like lighten my mood. It helped me think about the things that I do have to be grateful for, even on days where I might be in a complaining mood. It kind of helps me get out of that. So yeah, it's been nothing but helpful for me. Hopefully it's been great for y'all too, but I'm not, I'm not gonna stop doing this. I gotta do this every day now. I have to. 100%. So yeah, let me know in the comments if it's been working for y'all. If you haven't tried it yet, please do it. I will put it on the screen so you can screenshot it. So yeah, that's all I got for this one. I mean, I kind of, you know, gave y'all everything. So if you did enjoy this video, if I was your flavor, please leave a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. That'd be really, really cool. I would love to hang out with you once again. And you do have a few videos coming up pretty soon. So not just this series. Obviously, I drop a lot of shorts, but we got the shoe comparison videos coming up. We got my watch collection coming up. So stick around. It's not a bad place to be at. And yeah, I just really appreciate y'all, man. I know y'all look forward to this time. I do too. I've looked forward to kind of letting this be my second therapy. You know what I mean? Just kind of, I don't know, being free, man. And I appreciate y'all giving me the space to do it, you know, to be myself. I'm not sure if you realize how helpful all your comments have been, all the things that you guys say when I do kind of give you these little slivers of me. Like, it's been really encouraging. So don't take any of the kind words you give me for granted. They mean a lot. And like I said, I read them. I read them for the first hour. So if you happen to see this, I'm going to read them, but then I'm going to stop because after that, things get squirrely. <laughs> and I ain't got time, okay? So thank y'all so much. I'll see you on the next one. Peace.